Good evening. It has been an honor to serve as chairs of the Benefit Committee for the past two years. The work of Refugees International is very personal to us, and it is for that reason that we want to thank members of the Benefit Committee and our friends for their generous sponsorship and support. We know you have a choice in the many causes you support, and we are grateful you chose to walk this road with us. It is difficult to convey the essence of fear and despair felt by involuntary displacement, whether you're a king or president or, or ordinary citizens like us. I recently came across the writing of Rania Abu Zaid, where she captures this feeling in her powerful book about the horrors of civil war in Syria. Exile is about more than displacement. It is the physical rupture of community, the erasure of memory and identity, and untethering from those who know your family and history. It means you have to explain who you are. In Germany, Suleiman was just another foreigner, another refugee, another Syrian, another Arab Muslim, another number. You are a stranger you will always feel that humiliation, that pang of indignity, he said. Nobody comes here to be nothing. In Syria, I was somebody. This year, Refugees International would like to recognize Representative Will Hurd as the 2019 recipient of the Congressional Leadership Award. Raised in San Antonio, Texas, he is the first member to serve the 23rd District of Texas in Congress for three consecutive terms in a decade, unseating the incumbent, the Democratic incumbent, in 2014 and winning re-election in both 2016 and 2018. The Texas 23rd District includes 800 miles of U.S.-Mexico border larger than any other district having recently visited the Northern Triangle to examine the violence and lack of economic opportunities, he highlighted the need to review um, of asylum laws, stating that the 1950s asylum laws will not solve the root issues of the problems in the Northern Triangle. He has opposed the idea of a border wall, calling it a third century solution to a 21st century problem. Earlier this month, Representative Hurd commented this issue is not just a U.S.-Mexico problem, but a Western Hemisphere problem. He urged that we need to work together with the Organization of American States to, if, to solve the violence and economic decline in the Northern Triangle, expressing concern about cities and civil society groups becoming overwhelmed as the number of migrants continue to increase. Tonight, we honor Representative Hurd's commitment to public service, his recognition that principles of humanitarianism must inform policymaking toward those who have been forced to flee their homes, and his commitment to resolving challenging migration issues through civil discourse based on fact, not fear. It is our pleasure to present this year's Congressional Leadership Award to Representative Will Hurd. Please help welcome him. Daria Valley, thank you uh, for, for this. And, and let me tell you all a quick story. During my time in Pakistan, I was asked to lead an expedition to Azad Kashmir following the devastating 2005 earthquake that claimed the lives of 80,000 people. Uh, the ambassador wanted his own eyes and ears on the ground to get real-time updates on how the U.S. government could aid the Pakistanis as they grappled with how to recover from this disaster. The destruction from this earthquake was unbelievable. The number of people displaced and cut off from the rest of the country by the debris was staggering. 
It was the height of winter, getting to negative 20 degrees below zero at night. Following our first reports, the ambassador immediately directed the U.S. military to provide helicopters to help move the inhabitants of entire villages to safety, and I was helping to direct the airlift. We were packing CH-47 Chinook helicopters with 100 to 150 people each trip. One day, I had jumped on one of these helicopters to take me back to my bed down location when we got a report that there was a village of about 200 people that had been without food, running water, shelter, and electricity for about three or four days. So we decided to make one more run. As we landed, the crew slung open the big bay doors of the helicopter and folks began pouring in. The officer manning the door was in full flight gear, which made him look like he was from outer space. One little girl, who couldn't have been more than five or six years old, had lost both her parents in the earthquake. She saw this whole scene and was afraid. She was screaming, she was crying, she refused to get on the helicopter. A village elder picked this little girl up and thrust her into my arms. She was yelling and so scared. I held her as tight as I could and halfway through the trip, she eventually relaxed and calmed down. When we reached our destination, everyone piled out from being packed into this helicopter and I put the little girl down and she started to walk away. She took a few steps, turned around, ran back to me and gave me the biggest hug I think I've ever gotten in my life. She then walked over to the helicopter crewman who she first thought was probably from outer space and kissed him on the hand. He patted her on the head, gave her a thumbs up. She smiled real big, returned the gesture and then ran away. The face of that little girl is seared into my mind because that day and what we did in the aftermath of the earthquake is an example of how America is one of the few countries that has the resources and the willingness to help those in need even if they are 7,000 miles away. People all over the world know that America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. America was founded on an ideal, an ideal that all men are created equal. Our values have made America great and they have served as beacons of hope to many. Our actions as a government, our actions as a nation, our actions as individuals must reflect these self-evident truths. We should have already passed a permanent legislative fix for dreamers who have only known the United States of America as their home. We should have already passed a permanent legislative fix for TPS recipients who have been paying taxes and contributing to our culture, our society, and our economy. And we should have never taken children from the arms of their mothers. It's an honor to be recognized for playing a small part in this fight we are celebrating here tonight. It's an honor for my name to be included alongside champions like Senator Ted Kennedy and my friend Congressman Ed, Roy, Ed, Ed Royce. Excuse me. I want to thank you for this recognition, but most importantly, I want to thank Refugees International for reminding us to live up to our values. Thank you.